All right. Good afternoon. Good, good afternoon to each one of you. Welcome to Hidden Secrets of the Attic in 2020. What a great new year to start again. Being able to just talk to each one of you is always a pleasure. Well, we want to say, first of all, thank you for 2019, all of your support, everything you did to make sure that that year went well for us. You told people about this particular broadcast and you gave people hope. I am so excited about that. Now, I want to remind you to share, 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 share. I want to remind you to get somebody else on this line with us and be able to get at least 20 shares maybe would be pretty good. What do you think about that? Every time you share, it just takes it out even further. So don't think, well, I did my share for the week. No, you may need to share again because someone will see it later that didn't see it the first time, okay? 20 shares would be good. Okay, starting out, starting right now, how about that? <laughs> okay, so I wanna tell you first of all that we're excited about this week. We're also excited about all the others that are gonna be on Royal God's Royal Network with Dr. Paula Price being our chief apostle. We are excited this week that tonight we have Prophet Tamara with the Prophet Circle at 7.30. She's back, come on now, you've got to join in. All of you prophets, apostles, all of you out there, period, need to see her tonight. Also, we wanna remind you to come tomorrow morning and be with Apostle Ashley Claytor. She is also doing a great job, Apostles of the Future. That's at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. And then tomorrow night, Wednesday Warriors with Prophet, Chief Prophet, Tala Price. I'd like to get all that in there. Okay, took me a moment. Okay, wanna make sure that you join us tomorrow night right here in Bixby, Oklahoma, as we go to the Congregation of the Mighty, in, and you can also watch us online. And then Dr. Price is already back. She's back with us full, full swing. And she is on Thursday at 11 o'clock for Jesus and the Paula Show. So come on and join them. Uh, we have others that are broadcasting throughout the week. Don't forget to come and be a part of that. Again, share. Maybe you didn't get to do it when I first told you, but I'm going to remind you again. Share. Don't forget about the book. I want to see this book to be a bestseller because more are to come. So come on, $15 is not a lot of money. It's not. Really, when you invest money like that into the kingdom, you get blessed with more. It's just like planting a seed. You seed it to yourself. You seed it to others. God wants to bless you in the Hidden Secrets of the Added Book. You can purchase it on Amazon or you can purchase it on my website and it's being posted right now of where you need to go to do that. So make sure that you purchase this book. I want to call Amazon, I mean get in touch with Amazon in the next few days and say, wow, that many books went out of here. Quit thinking about it. Just do it. Come on here. It's also an ebook. So if you don't want to purchase it, you can get it for for third no, it's only I believe it's only $9.99. Yes, on the ebook. So Come on and be a part of that. Today, our addict topic, I want to get right into this topic this week, is confiscating offense in 2020. Confiscating that offense that has been coming up against you, you're getting offended by everything. The Church of Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, I look at people nowadays and I can say hello, I can say boo, and they're offended. Come on, we gotta grow yeah. out of this. Not just grow up, but grow out of this. So come on and get control of your life and understand that you can confiscate. Confiscate means you can remove it. Remove this, this spirit, this demonic force, this root of offense out of you in 2020, starting today. You're already in it, so start now. Also, confiscate means to impound. Let's impound this thing and say, wait, you're not getting out of here. Seize, it means to seize. So remove, impound, and seize the spirit of offense that has been ruling your life for way too long in this year that we start right now. Now, I looked up this, this uh, definition of offense and offended and dictionary.com and it said to irritate, annoy, or anger, cause mm -hmm. resentful displeasure in that person or receive insult because we get insulted by everything, just simple little things. Somewhere we missed something on this thing. Down in your attic, you've had a fence operating for way too long. God said, 
Get this thing out. Impound this thing. Tell it it cannot operate in your life anymore. Make a decision that the offense that has been coming up against you is going to have to go. And here's some reasons why people get offended. I see this all the time. I've uh, pastored a church for several years, and now I'm in an apostle uh, role with Dr. Paula Price here, and I'm, you know, I don't care where you go, you're going to see this somewhere. Pastor didn't shake my hand. Apostle didn't shake my hands. They get offended. I did not get the opportunity to serve in the church. Everybody else is in high positions. I never get a chance to do anything. Nobody visits our house. You notice that? They always go to Pastor John's house. They always go to Apostle Sally's house. How about the greeter was rude? All she says is, we need you to sit on this side. But you got offended. The greeter was rude. How about, it's just too noisy. Did you hear them? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, children, they might get offended a little bit because they're like, okay, well, they just please just cut that music down because they're maybe not used to loudness. But you adults, you go to football games and you scream and you hear all of the people in the football stadium scream, but you are offended when you get in church and the music is loud and we are shouting or we are screaming, glory, hallelujah, we're doing all of this in church and you are offended by that? But you don't get offended when they say, run, get that touchdown, hurry up, you better make that. You do all of that and you never get offended that the person sitting next to you is screaming all in your ear. The band is louder than ever. Come on, let's be real today. You need to confiscate offense that is coming up against you. How about, how could they say that about me? You get offended because they told the truth about you. How about when you say, they don't appreciate what I do. I'm always making sure that I bring everybody food after church, but they never appreciate it. My cooking must not be the best. How about this last one? You're too political in church. You're always talking about stuff about all the, the different people in the White House and different people. I don't think they should ever do that. Do not mix church with uh, 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 politi politics. Don't do that. You know that's not good. Did the Bible tell you not to do that? Somewhere we missed something. Okay, I won't even pound on that today. But I want you to know, these are ways that people get offended with a list that could keep going on till Jesus enters back on this earth to mm -hmm. take us away. Mm -hmm. You all know that it's something in that list probably that you've had in your own mouth or you've heard someone else say or somebody saying right now. How do we get clear of this? That's where we're going. First of all, it's always the word. Proverbs 11 and 12. I encountered the scripture and I went, ah, that's so true. Proverbs 11, 12 says, he who is devoid of wisdom despises his neighbor, but a man of understanding holds his peace. Now, maybe we should just concentrate on that because therefore we would get better understanding the next time we open our mouth to be offensive or to be offended, okay? He who is devoid of wisdom, if you have no wisdom, you will despise your neighbor. You're gonna have offenses. It's gonna be quickly coming at you. People mm -hmm. always saying something and it's always there. Why? Because you're devoid of wisdom. How about getting some wisdom? I'm always saying to people, I said, in all these things, get understanding. I always say, that what is the thing that God wants you to have the most? Is wisdom. It tells you that in Proverbs. Why are we not going after wisdom? Because because we have when we have wisdom, we talk differently. We are slow to speak. Mm -hmm. We don't have this attitude of always just trying to tell somebody off. I have this thing now where I've prayed this prayer of God, let it be that the first thing I'm asking for is wisdom. That every time I'm about to face a situation, wisdom pops up. I can either choose to take wisdom or I can just throw it to the curb and say, no, I think I'll just go ahead and do it, have that get back spirit on me. But I usually go, hmm, I can either talk right now or I can shut myself down and hold my peace. Mm -hmm. I can get at a place where I have an understanding and I'm holding. The scripture says, holds his peace. How many mm -hmm. of you are holding your peace? How many of you screaming at your children, but you should have held your peace to get some wisdom on how you needed to correct them, how you needed to talk to them? How many of you are going and telling your pastor or your apostle or your prophet off before you had wisdom to know why they did what they did? How many of you are angry with the political system right now, but you haven't obtained wisdom of why God put the political system in place in this hour? You didn't ask God, well, what was your mind on this subject? Did I need to think higher? Maybe my spiritual attributes aren't there. Maybe I'm not understanding. I'm talking to someone. 
today because we are so angry at these particular political people that are in office, whether it is our president, our vice president, our senator, or our policeman. <laughs> We're so angry with all these people and we never ask for wisdom. What are you saying? And if you tell me wisdom is that they need to go and be put out and thrown to the dogs, something's wrong with that. Because God said, pray for those that are in leadership. He also had told you to find out why he put them in leadership mm -hmm. and what he's doing with it. Now, if God wasn't in it, who, who, where is God? What, is he not big enough to take care of us? I, I'm going to leave that right there. I'm just letting you know. How about you all not being devoid of wisdom so that you can hold your peace? When it's time to really talk, make sure you got the rest of the story. Maybe you have the whole story. Maybe you have the story in his mind. Mm -hmm. How about that? In his mindset. Because somewhere, I, Sally Cheney, didn't always have wisdom operating in me. And I would just make any kind of irrational statement before I thought about, what is the mind of Christ on this? Where is he going with this? Why did he do this? Why is it that Saul got put in place? And, it had, and David had to wait before he got put in place. What was the wisdom of God? Not, I mean, I know David was young, but we needed Saul out of, out of here because he was crazy. Okay, what was the wisdom of God in doing everything he did in the timing that he did? All righty, hallelujah. I got another scripture for you. This is a scripture that myself and another young lady named Brenda, her and I used to just hit this scripture all the time. And we, we made sure that we got it in our spirit. Psalms 119, 165. Come on, you know where I'm going. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. And nothing shall offend them. I'm talking about offense today. Come on here. How many of you all have been offended and you didn't put this scripture in place? Offenses are going to come till we are out of here. They're going to come. They're part of persecution. But lovers of law are peacemakers. Those that love his law, they're peacemakers. They're not going to cause strife and division and hate and anger and just confusion. They're not going to do that. We neither give or take offense because I'm a lover of the law. I believe in his law. I have his law. I love his law. I love the word of God. I love what God says in his word. And therefore, I'm not going to be offended. If you're being offended a lot, you might want to take Psalms 119 and 165 and meditate on it and find out if you're loving what you're dealing with in the offense more than you're loving what the word of God tells you to do. How about holding your peace? getting some wisdom, understanding what God has to say on the matter. Come on, meditate on those scriptures. Psalms 119, 165, and Proverbs 11, 12. Get those in your spirit so that you can come out of this offense. Everybody doesn't like me. Well, they like them better. Well, I got to get up to their statue. Then they'll like me a little bit more. Come on, get rid of that. Dr. Price, she will rebuke us. I don't care who we are in leadership. It doesn't mean she doesn't like us, but she's going to rebuke us if we're wrong. But she's going to love us anyway okay mm -hmm. so jesus mm -hmm. does the same thing so get that scripture in your heart great peace have those that love the law and nothing shall offend them this scripture also says that no external troubles can rob us of our great peace no offenses no stumbling blocks all of that which is thrown against us and persecution temptation every bit of that a malice of even our enemies None of this can help to uh, get us off course because we will not detain or divert from where God calls us to be because we got wisdom, because we have peace, and because we're peacemakers, okay? So we should reserve all of this outrage when we have all of this offense, all of this offense is coming up against you. Uh, we should reserve that for truly offensive things like cruelty. That's offensive. When people get really mean and want to go and just cut up somebody or do something cruel, beat a child a little bad, we should be offended at that. We should be offended at abortion. Did you know I was going to say that? Oh, yes, because abortion is an offense. How dare you destroy that child's life? They didn't ask you to bring them into the world, so how dare you take them out of the world? Why can't they have a say-so? Let them just go ahead and be whoever they were called to be. How about hypocrisy? We get offended by hypocrisy. Okay, that is good. I am offended when somebody acts hypocritical. And I'm most offended when you come against our Lord Jesus Christ. So the greatest offense you can have is to come against 
our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the greatest offense you should have. Because when they take down our name, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ's name, say things bad about what he's doing in this earth, try to use him in a wrong way, say things like he's gay, say things like that, you know, he, he surely uh, had relationships with someone, all of this kind of stuff. No, then I'm offended. You're talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. I support him, I believe in him, and he, it is no right of yours to take this man down. He has done everything, including giving his life for us. So I'm offended when you talk ugly about him, even mm -hmm. use his name in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. So those are the ways that you need to have offense, not the other ways. So I asked you today, how many of you today are easily, I'm gonna use the word easily, offended? You know, a year ago, someone said to me, I can tell that you're gaining a little weight, baby. I can see that you're gaining weight. Now, you know, when people say stuff like that, you start looking at yourself and going, what? Oh, no, how dare you? You know, years ago, I probably would have just severed our relationship and said something like, you know, oh, you need to get out of my life. But despite all of the immediate urge to make all kinds of excuses for why I had gained weight, I smiled and I just said these words, you're right. I need to watch my eating habits and I need to do better. Whether they're right or wrong, you don't have to come back and say, I'm gonna get you back. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be offended to where you have to act out what you are yes. reacting in yourself, mm -hmm. okay? I've learned why bother taking offense? Is this offense, is, are this incident truly significant? Is it gonna take over my life? Now I say, I'm gonna move on. I usually change the subject because maybe what they're trying to hit me so hard on is trying to torment me and I'm not going to let it. Mm -hmm. But I relax and I tell myself, hold your peace, Apostle Sally, and get over it. I'm going to say it one more time. Hold your peace and get over it. If you're going to tackle and destroy this offense that's been in your attic, you need to hold your peace, use some wisdom, and Move on. That means get over it. Quit trying to make it be something that you have to have a conversation or some kind of counseling session over for the rest of your life. When people bring subjects up over and over in counseling ses sessions, I'm like, okay, you were offended. We talked about that last week. You got prayer. Did you get re-offended? <laughs> because somewhere you need to let that go. You need to move forward. Somewhere that person has not even cared about what you felt, but you're still feeling it, which means you're hurting you, not them. I can say moving from ease wasn't really easy. It, you know, when I was offended in the past, I, I, I was quick to respond, but now it's easier. It is when people say things. I needed pre plenty of practice as I went along of how to apply wisdom and hold my peace. The realization of getting over it was not about offending the offender. Please hear me right now. It wasn't about offending the offender, but about not being offended in the first place. That's what the real realization was. Mm -hmm. Why in the world did I let myself get to that place in the first place? We have to stop making every life-altering decision based on others' thoughtless and insensitive remarks and all kind of actions. We have to get to that place. I have made some of those life-altering decisions, and I didn't want to speak to anybody the rest of my life, certain people. And God said, well, you didn't do them any harm. You did you some harm. Because unforgiveness can't be in your heart anyway. So again, I'm going to tell you this. Offense is like an automatic weapon. That's what it's like. Once you pull the trigger, it keeps on firing. It doesn't Ooh. stop just because you pull the trigger one time. It keeps on. And in most cases, we cannot control what others do. But we can control how we react to what yeah, others yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. We can control that. We don't have to let ourselves be so angry all the time with the actions and the words of people. You control that. You hold your peace. Hold your peace. Talk to God. Get over it. Talk to God. Get that peace that passes all understanding and settle yourself down and go on to the next place of your life. 
Offense is a word that we've either experienced or we've seen somebody else go through it, but it is a hot topic today, and that's why I'm bringing it up to you, because it became something that the body of Christ decided to take on real good and use every day and be offended by people and not understand the battle wasn't what, what you thought it was. The battle wasn't yours, it was God's. Let it go. It wasn't yours, it was God's. Let it go. So whether it's being offended over politics, whether it's being offended over religion, whether it's being offended over freedom, protests, any other choices that are out there, you're dealing with being offended on some level and God wants you free from it. Get it out of your attic. Mm -hmm. I'm coming to a close in just a moment, but I want you to know this. To understand more about offense works against individuals who have a relationship with Jesus. I began to consider how the mindset of offense really worked because I needed to know. I needed to know how does this really work, this thing that just starts plaguing people. And it is like a plague. It will just try to wipe your whole life out to where you just go into depression because of an offense. Unless properly identified and repentance can come forth, the spirit of offense will continue to cause you chaos. It will continue to cause you destroy relationships. Mm -hmm. So the spirit of offense, remember this, has infiltrated our churches, it's infiltrated our school systems, it has infiltrated everywhere you go, I don't care if it's Walmart, and it's causing division, division, dissension, and strife, and hurt, and pain. Some people are very hurt. They are so hurt they can't even come out in the public eye. We have to re-examine, searching within ourselves to see when and when and when, I'm saying that three times to tell you, did this offense arise? Get to the root of when it came about. If a person easily shuts down when people begin to speak truth to them, hmm, I make you this suggestion. You need to know that that thing that the other person did may have been wrong, but for you to shut down, you're the one that's going to be having to come out of that sickness of offense, okay? Mm -hmm. Here are just a few triggers and some traps of offense that you need to know about. Number one, offense first attacks the mind. Where does it come? It hits the mm -hmm. mind. In Romans 8, 5 and 8, it says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. How many of you set your mind on the things of the flesh? Mm -hmm. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit, peace. Okay, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. That word peace keeps coming up when we deal with offense. For the carnal mind is hostile toward God, for it is not subject to the law, nor indeed can it be. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So if you're in the flesh being offended, you can't please him right there in the word. So the mind, when offense takes root, the first thing is coming after is your mind. Da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. If offense can attack itself to your thoughts, it owns your ability to process understanding. It owns that whole thing to be able to process the understanding that you need. The moment offense attacks or attaches itself to your mind, the ability to have clarity. Have you ever noticed that? And even peace, it's just diminished. Mm -hmm. As everything new becomes about feeding that thought, that thing that someone offended you with, you meditate on it. You have a tormenting day on it. That's what happens. Hurt and offense comes as soon as, it hurt comes as, full, as soon as you are offended. So it's going to try to get you that thought in your mind where you have no more peace. Number two, offense attacks and robs your time. Okay, it robs your mind and it will rob your time. When offense actually attacks, it just get that attachment into you, your time becomes consumed. What are you doing? Thinking about it. You get up in the morning, you go to bed, in the middle of the day at lunch, you go take your lunch and you sit at a table by yourself and think about it. Consume with proving others are wrong and you are right and others are wrong and you, you become consumed with payback. You could consume that what has been done to you it's taking all your time up. Did you remember that you needed to go and, and get your award today at, at the college? And did you remember that you had to go and get somebody back to Jesus, get them saved? Did you, oh, all your time is taken because of an offense. Number three, offense attacks and robs your relationships. This is the one the Lord had to teach me the most. It will rob your relationships. It will eventually put a wedge between you and your family because sometimes my family has offended me. Or your friends. Sometimes my best friends have offended me. Offense will divide your most devoted friends and become an enemy because they didn't see it your way. 
So number four, offense attacks and attaches to your heart. Okay, we always talk about the heart and mm -hmm. the hidden secrets. The moment that offense attaches itself to your heart, every single thing you do becomes toxic. It becomes dangerous. That's what happens. Offense is an ugly spirit. It's out of the abundance of the heart that everything and your true intentions are revealed. Is that mm -hmm. true? Mm -hmm. So it's the moment that your heart becomes so infected with offense that your actions become destructive and those around you are also affected by your actions. So the last one, let's talk about health. Offense attacks and attaches to your health. I gotta talk about this one. I've been there. I've had this happen to me where my health was destroyed or my health was disturbed, I'll say it that way, because of offense. <laughs> Many don't like to talk about it, but the truth is this. Offense will begin to become a natural issue in your body. And where does it come from? Those negative thoughts, that bitterness, that unforgiveness, that rage, that frustration, that unwarranted worry that you had when you get offended. How about strife? And all the list goes on until it begins to take a toll on your life, on your very breathing, on your heart, on different portions of your body. It begins to affect your physical health. Don't let it do that. Mm -hmm. Just because you were offended, you're going to let this thing of unforgiveness, which comes out of an offense, take you down? Remember, the John Doe and the Cindy Sue have gone on to New York. They've already moved to Canada. Some of them are in Japan. And they are happy. God's already dealt with them. Maybe they never came back to tell you they're sorry, but you need to get over it. Don't let your life stay like it is where you are bound by this offense that someone did to you to try to destroy your life. God loves you too much to let that happen. So a spirit of offense, it really comes with one purpose. And what is that? To destroy you. It's straight from the enemy. And if you allow an open door, it will not be long before you see the effects of that open door. You have to make a decision. It says guard your heart. It says guard your mind and keep your spirit devoted to who? The Father. That's where your mind has to be. When a fence starts knocking on your door, and it's going to do that because that's one of the devil's plans, please walk out what the Bible declares. Tell the devil that you are not going to be moved by what you hear or say. Tell that devil that you walk in peace, that you've got peace being ruled by peace. Tell that devil that you know that you love the God, the Lord's law, therefore you will have great peace. Not just peace, but you will have great peace. Come on here, that's what you have to do. Don't be the type of person who calls everybody up on the phone, hello, hello, let me tell you about my offense. Let me tell you what I went through. Come on, I got to tell you what I am going through this every day. I, I can't get over it, girl. She really offended me. He really offended That little two-year-old really offended me. That's how, I act, how you all act. Even a two-year-old offends you. Hmm. A good mentor and a good leader will speak the truth to you in love and give you the you the person that practical example and instruction on how to walk out those past hurts, how to walk out that pain, how to walk out that destruction you feel, how to walk out that person that the only thing they said was, you don't look like you did in the yearbook, you look like you got a little bit older, come on, grow up and walk this thing out. Don't let this thing be seated in you forever. Instead of always giving the answer, instruct them in question, from, uh, so that they make suggestions of what they think about, what they need to say about seeking the Holy Spirit for discernment. You can talk to a person and say, what you said to me is not so much that it hurt me anymore. I want you to know that there's a way you could have said what you said to me. It would have been a lot easier. So let's resolve to go through the coming year determined not to be easily offended anymore. Mm -hmm. Let's just resolve to do that. Confiscate offense in 2020. That's my prayer for each one of us, including me, because like I said, it doesn't have any boundaries. It's not going to say, well, you're exempt, Apostle Sally. It's going to come, and it usually comes after I preach a message. It might be from my husband. It might be from my child, um, things that I don't understand about my sister, whatever, but it will. It, when it comes, you need to confiscate it. 
You need to impound it. You need to make sure that it does not overtake your soul. And that is the bottom line. When it gets in your soul and starts operating, it's going to bring poison, toxins, and all that kind of stuff. Don't let it do it. So I'm going to pray with you right now about this. Father, I thank you today. Even as these people are sharing this and sharing this and sharing this, their shares are coming against this spirit of offense. Because, God, you are cleaning them up and letting them know that cannot go in 2020. You're looking for generals. You're looking for those that are a force to be reckoned with. You're looking for those that can come so strong, God, and stand up like that lion you want us to be and be able to scream out to the devil, oh, no, great. Great peace I have and the law the perfect law is so in me I will keep that peace so God I'm calling peace to settle on everybody let their minds come into your mindset let all of us begin to think like you think operate like you operate speak like you speak take down what you take down destroy what you destroy I come against everything that is trying to take these people's minds and put them in the wrong place and keep them in bondage, even in depression. I break off that offensive demon that has tried to cause their minds to be no longer the mind of Christ. I speak in Jesus' name that they get over it, take control, begin to get back in place and obtain the great peace you want us to have so, God, we will know when to speak a thing and know when to not. And when we hear a thing that tries to affect our soul, we have a wall of your peace so up around us that the devil can't come past that wall. I believe it. I decree it. I speak it in the atmosphere of each listener that will come online. And I bless you, God, that it's done in sweet Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Remember to share. I told you that at least five times today. 20 times will be good if you can hit that button. Okay, so do it. We'll see you next week. Have a great weekend.